Hi guys, you will be shocked to hear that it is a gray gloomy day, soon to be stormy day, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the Finger Lakes of New York where I believe we have had five times the rain for July uh, and we get to have another dose of it coming up any minute. But before I start uh, laying sandbags around my cabin door, uh, do what we I try to do every day now that I'm back from my whirlwind tour of the smoky skies of Portland, Maine. It is now, it is Wednesday, July 29th, 2021, as the storm clouds roll in. So for today's Chronicle of the Collapse, I was going to once again hear from Brother Robert Hunziker, my fellow Collapsitarian, with his, uh, his new essay and counterpunch called The Apocalypse Is Now, where he's making the point, modern day society is proving that apocalypse is, that a my reading glasses have disappeared up in the woods. Modern day society is proving that apocalypse has multiple possible outcomes. In fact, a case can be made that it has never been closer to reality because it is already happening here and there. Yes, but uh, what most of what this is is uh, talking about, which I've already covered, if you missed it, that excellent essay in The Guardian by Diana Six, the entomologist Diana Six. Uh, if you have not heard that one, that's what he's talking about. So I'm going to skip over as long as we're in The Guardian. And uh, I guess this is technically what they're calling an opinion piece where four climatologists, four climatologists answer the question, in their opinion, how many years until we must act on climate? Zero, say these climate thinkers. And uh, they start out with Jennifer Francis, who I'm a big fan of. Then we hear from good old Michael Mann. Yeah. Then Holly Jean Buck and Peter Kalmus. Okay, so we're going to start. I am Peter Kalmus is a climate scientist at, NET, at, at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. All right, take it away, Peter. Peter Kalmus, we have zero years before climate and ecological breakdown because it is already here. As uh, Robert Hunziker was just saying, the apocalypse is already here. The apocalypse was here, oh, 30 years ago, but people are just beginning to figure it out. Okay, we have zero years before climate and ecological breakdown because it is already here. We have zero years left to procrastinate. The longer we wait to act, the worse the floods, fires, droughts, famines, and heat waves will get. The primary cause of these catastrophes is burning fossil fuel. Again, I need to break in here. The primary cause of these catastrophes is breeding. Okay? No fossil fuels are ever burned by a person who was never born. The primary cause of these catastrophes is breeding. But since breeding and overpopulation never mentioned in any of these opinions, we're going to run with this, uh, with this myth. <clears throat> Burning fossil fuels. Therefore, we must shut down the fossil fuel industry as quickly as we can. Fossil fuel subsidies must end today. 
new fracking wells, pipelines, and other fossil fuel infrastructure can no longer be built. That we continue on this path is collective insanity. Fossil fuel must be capped and rationed and diverted to necessities as we transition to a zero carbon civilization. If we fail, the planet will continue to heat up, creeping past 1.5C, then 2C, then 3C of global heating as we keep squandering precious time with every fraction of a degree, the floods and fires and heat will get worse. Coastal cities will be abandoned. Ocean currents will shift. Crops will fail. Ecosystems will collapse. Hundreds of millions of people will flee regions with humid heat too high for the human body. He's talking about the wet bulb temperature geopolitics will break down. No place will be safe. These disasters are like gut punches to our civilization. There are tipping points lurking in our future, but it is impossible to know when they will be triggered. Peter, they were triggered about 30 years ago. What is certain is that every day we fail to act brings us closer. Some, like the loss of the Amazon rainforest, may already have been passed. There's nothing may about it. We can kiss goodbye the Amazon rainforest. Jair Bozonero might as well cut the damn thing down at this point because there will be no Amazon rainforest on this planet. But I do like Peter. Uh, if we were still doing interviews on Collapse Chronicles, we would definitely have Peter on the show. Okay, good old Jennifer Francis is a senior scientist at the Woodwell Climate Research Center. Jennifer Francis says, we cannot wait. We need to immediately stop subsidizing all aspects of the fossil fuel industry. According to this report that's, you know, there's links to other reports. The fossil fuel industry received $66 billion in subsidies in 2016, while renewables, excluding nuclear, only received $9.5 billion. We should instead use those billions of subsidy dollars to ramp up the renewable energy industry. Uh, generation from wind and solar, don't forget nuclear, distribution, a smarter grid, storage, and electric transportation. If we do not succeed in changing our destructive behavior, the increasing trends in extreme weather, sea levels, government destabilization, and human misery will continue and worsen. Extreme heat waves, drought, wildflowers, and flooding events like those we have seen in recent summers will become commonplace. Many coastal cities and communities around the world will be increasingly inundated by high tides and storm surges. Longer, more intense droughts will destroy cropland and forced agricultural communities to uproot their families in search of a better life. The devastation of coral reefs around the world will worsen, wiping out fisheries that provide staple protein for millions of people. All of these impacts are happening now. If we don't act fast, many communities, cultures, and species will cease to exist. Okay, good old Michael Mann, director of the Earth System Science Center at Penn State University. <clears throat> How many years do we have to act? Strictly speaking, zero, which is to say that we must act in earnest now. We have a decade 
we well we had a decade the the 1970s michael you know this as well as i do we had a decade 50 years ago but according to michael mann we still have a decade uh-huh his uh his definition of now he says now and then we have a decade hmm very interesting michael your your math maybe the director of the Earth System Science Center at Penn State University has never taken first grade math. Anyway, according to Michael, we have a decade within which we must have global carbon emissions. As I argue in the new climate war, this requires dramatic systemic change. No new fossil fuel infrastructure, massive subsidies for renewables, carbon pricing and deploying other policy tools to accelerate the clean energy transition already underway. Yes, and now for some uh, lemonade. We are seeing unprecedented public awareness. Hmm. Renewed leadership from the U.S. and diplomatic progress with China. All right! We're seeing diplomatic progress with China, according to Michael Mann, the other of the world's two largest carbon polluters. There is reason for cautious optimism. Don't you love that term, that overused cliche, cautious optimism, that we can rise to this challenge, but there is much work to do and precious little time now to do it. We must now choose between two paths as we face our future. One leads to massive suffering and collapse of our civilizational infrastructure. The other path leads to a prosperous future for us, our children and grandchildren. But that requires that we leave fossil fuels behind. The choice is ours. And we're going to end up uh, with Holly Jean Buck. I love that name, Holly Jean Buck, a postdoctoral research fellow at UCLA's Institute of the Environment and Sustainability. I love it. The name of her new book is after geoengineering, after geoengineering, climate tragedy, repair, and restoration. Okay, take it away. Holly Jean Buck, we need to ramp up action now in order to transform all of our major systems by 2050. Energy, transportation, industry, agriculture, waste management. We'll need to eat less meat, farm in ways that store more carbon in the soils, reforest degraded or abandoned land, and restore wetlands. We need, 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 oops, excuse me. We need to force companies to outfit cement plants and other industrial facilities with carbon capture technologies. When it comes to energy, we need to electrify everything. Uh, guys, uh, I, I like this woman, but she sounds like a little uh, five-year-old writing to Santa Claus, writing her little wish list to Santa Claus about you know, what she needs to find under her, she needs a, 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 a red-nosed blinking reindeer to drop all of this stuff under her, I guess, artificial Christmas tree. So uh, I'm going to put the link on here and you can listen to uh, Holly Jean's need list. Uh, let's... Uh, Okay, let's get to Holly Jean Buck's bottom line. They give Holly Jean Buck as much room as they give all those other three people. She's, she's a graduate student. Uh, anyway, 
Uh, if you want to hear what Holly Jean Buck, uh, what else is on her on her Santa's wish list, go on the link. But getting to the bottom, if we do not succeed in transitioning away from fossil fuels globally, we could face an uneven world where a few rich countries congratulate themselves for going green and a fuel oil producer nations and are supplying the rest of the world with dirty fuel which they use because they don't have alternatives. In that world, greenhouse gas concentrations keep rising. Climate change exacerbates the risk of war and conflict. It's hard to measure or model this for exact quantitative projections, but it is a serious concern. Phasing out fossil fuels and supporting other countries in exiting fossil fuels is the best bet for a peaceful future. And so guys, uh, at, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, and just because I'm enjoying talking to myself, from this point forward, okay, number one, with the possible exception of Holly Jean, uh, I believe every single word that's being said here, okay, everything here it, it is perfect sense. If we do not get rid of fossil fuels and root off the red-nosed reindeer and Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy uh, do not uh, come to save us, in the next 10 minutes, fossil fuels are going to destroy the planet. Okay, if I'm looking, I should have brought an onion here, a doomer onion here. All right, so I agree with this. Business as usual, fossil fuels will destroy this planet. This is clear. Uh, there's still a few people, maybe in this room, who don't agree with this, but I think the evidence is in fossil fuels will destroy the planet. Here is the problem. No one is peeling back the onion. Okay, you just peel back the onion one layer and you reach uh, the next layer of the onion, which we'll call the bright green lie uh, layer of the onion which the Guardian nowhere peeled back, that every single one of these issues that they talk about, the bright green lie, the, this little lefty AOC, uh, uh, IPCC, uh, how many other alphabet soups out there, is a joke. All of these solutions they are mentioning are every single bit as bad for this planet as fossil fuels. From the broken record, maybe a few of these will somewhat reduce the carbon footprint of the technologies on the planet. For every improvement in the carbon footprint, okay, what you're going to have is a worse footprint on some other area. The net result is no different. All of this crap, every bit of this crap, when combined, is every bit as bad to this planet as fossil fuels. The, the death of the planet might play out a little bit differently. We might get another 10 or 20 years, but it ain't happening anyway. Of, of course, all of this, it, 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 this whole thing is a joke. It ain't happening. And then, of course, we go to the third layer of the onion, which, uh, as I say, there's me, Andy the gardener, I think it's the two of us. I think Andy the gardener and I are the two people who understand that if the planet really does come up with some little pie in the sky, magic, real live, clean, green, limitless, free energy to hand to 8 billion uh, human termites, that is the worst thing of all that could happen. Free energy 
is a death knell for this planet. The only reason this planet is still alive as much as it is, is because of the inefficiency of fossil fuels. Now, it is good news that everything that they're proposing now, with the possible exception of nuclear energy, uh, does is even less efficient or is more inefficient than fossil fuels. All of this other crap, mainly solar and wind, the two big ones, are the E-R-O-E-I is uh, the, the inefficient, they're, they're even more inefficient than fossil fuels. So if we flip over to them, uh, the main reason they're going to be saving the planet is not so much their savings in carbon emissions is, is that they're so damn inefficient that so it's going to take a lot more work for us to take down the planet. But if they really do come up with, with um, the, uh, the holy grail of energy, uh, you can kiss this planet goodbye uh, a, a, a lot quicker than with fossil fuels. This is why we are doomed. This is why I am a doomer. It makes no difference. Business as usual, fossil fuels, doomed. Moving to all of this pie, all of this little bright green lies, your damn solar panels and your windmills and your electric cars, doomed. Or we go to the third one, what everybody wants, doomed. We're doomed, we're doomed, we're doomed. This planet is doomed. That is why I am a doomer. Uh, this is why I say get out there and enjoy it while you still can, which is what I'd like to be doing, but I can't because we have another monsoon uh, rolling in and I should probably be getting flood insurance on my little house, but instead I need to get in my gas sucking truck and head to the auto parts store to buy a new headlight bulb and some windshield wipers to wipe away the oncoming apocalypse that is already here. What do you think, little dog? Say bye to the folks. And I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy your fossil fuels or whatever you have while you still can. Bye, guys.